Hello world, this is Craig. I think I may have left this project hanging because I've had some people ask me what I finally wound up doing for card guides for this STD bus backplane. If you remember when we first started this project, what I was planning on doing was just using these individual card guides that you can get, mounting them in here, one for each card. But this had two problems. The first was that I couldn't find a manufacturer that made these tall enough. And you know, if these aren't tall enough, then the, the ejector can't push on the top of it to get the card out. So I needed some that were taller. And the second problem these had is that they tended to bow out so that by the time they got to the top, they weren't touching the cards anyway. So I finally decided to just go ahead and design up and, and print a set of card guides uh, for myself, just specifically for this backplane. This is what I came up with. So they're the same height as the cards. So the ejectors can push on them. And, uh, you know, it's easy to get the cards out then when it's got the, the card guide to, to push on. They have a uh, nice airflow here. The, the guide for the cards wound up being nice and straight. And a part of that is I printed this a couple of different ways, but the way that I had the most success was to print these with this face, so the inside face down on the platen. So basically this is printed first. That gave me the straightest guides with the fewest amount of hairs, because this, this has some strings on it because this is, uh, this is PETG. And if you printed it in PLA, it'd probably be better. But if you print it in PETG, then uh, you know it's, it's bound to have uh, quite a few of these little filaments hanging on it. But anyway, printed that face down, and it turned out pretty good. I haven't done a whole lot of cleanup on these. You can see that there's one slot for each card, but then there's an extra slot out here in the front. And this is if you are have just a normal card out here and you want to have it also be cooled properly, then you'll want to put uh, either print out a just a blank slot or a blank uh, card to, to go in this front slot, or you can put your extender card or something else in there, just so that the airflow, if you're using forced air, goes across that card just like all the others. Or you could just cut out a piece of manila folder or something to stick in there. When I made this, you know, originally since I was planning on using just individual card guides, I had mounted on the back plane some components between these. And unfortunately, that means that when I did this as a single piece, I had to leave gaps for the components that were down there. You know, we got some current limiting resistors for these LEDs. There's maybe some bulk capacitors down there or some decoupling capacitors. Anyway, that's what all these arches are for at the bottom. They're not, not for aesthetics. They're because I had stuff down there that I had to, had to skip over. We can push the reset button on that. Um, and also, you can see that because I did want to have this extra slot on this end for cooling this first card, that meant that this was extended out and it extended out past the, the test points for the bus signals. And that means that there's had to be this little notch put in. And you can see there's a notch on the front and a notch on the back. And that is what makes the back card different from the front. So these are two unique parts. So if you open these files, you're looking at them. That's why there's a different for the front and the back. If you were to just print two of the same one, you'd wind up with this notch right here. It'd be over here on this end. Uh, so when you open this file, this is what I call the front. The side with the little reset button is, is the front one. This is the back one. Okay, uh, we originally, since I planned on using these individual ones, and they each required an alignment hole and a screw, we have holes aplenty on the bottom. I went ahead and I put all the holes in to match the motherboard or the, the back plane. But uh, I only have four of these socket head cap screws in. And what I did on this one is I just, I just tapped these for 632. In the model, there's a little hole there. And I, I opened those up for a 632 and just tapped them. You could put in a plastide, or if you wanted to, you could melt an insert to put in there. But there's no nuts or anything. There's no inserts during the build. And you know these aren't under a great deal of stress. And any stress they're under is, is almost straight down when you're trying to eject a card. So, so far, those four little socket head cap screws have worked just fine in there. You'll notice that on each end, there's these little tabs. So there's two little tabs here. They're sloping down towards the bottom. And what those tabs are for is if you want to use forced cooling on this, I also made a little uh, fan guide, a little plenum. And this is two additional parts. There's one part here that is the little plate that the fans are mounted to. That's just super glued into this uh, shell, the plenum part of it. And so this shroud goes over the, uh, you just spread it out until it fits, and it 
just goes over and it, it slides down. You can see it just catches the two little slots in this shroud, catch those little tabs, and, and it just sits there. There's nothing holding this thing in. It's not screwed or anything. You know, it doesn't want to go anywhere. So th it, that works just fine. It's not airtight. I'm not too worried about the air uh, slipping out. But it is, uh, uh, you know, we do have good cooling on the inlet, nice open area. There's no filter. Uh, if it clogs up, I'll just, or it starts to collect dust, I'll just uh, take an air hose to it. The one that goes on the back does have these two extra holes, and these are for cooling the voltage regulators that you have here. So uh, waste air can come down, and, and a little bit of air will come out and cool those. I just have the, the leads for the fans coming out, and, you know, I forgot to put on the back plane any, uh, any plugs for, or any receptacles for the fans. So I need to put 5-volt output on on each side for fans if you want to uh to, to use fans power these uh let's see that is i think it as i mentioned this is made in uh, pet g and because i wanted this to be in blue this isn't esd safe filament because uh, esd safe filament you can only get in black so if you do this, and if you're concerned about ESD, I'm not sure that that's required, but if you are concerned about ESD, then you'll want to spray these uh, to make them ESD safe with a, a, a little conductive spray. Uh, I think that is it. As I mentioned, I will put these on the project file. Uh, they'll be uh, in the documentation for the STD, and uh, you can download the build files for this. There's, there's either six or five unique different parts, because these two are both unique. They're mirrored images of each other. The shroud is unique because the left side or the side with the transistors has got these holes on the bottom. The little plate that holds the fans may be the same for the front and back. I forget. All right. And oh, by the way, this shroud, when I printed it, I printed it with this, uh, with this top grill uh, facing down. So this was printed like this. And these guys were all printed with this inside down towards the platen. And they, they printed quite nicely. I didn't have any real problems with this. Not a lot of stringing. There was a little bit of cleanup on this, but I guess if you look closely, you can see there's, there's still some stringing in between these, but nothing that's going to restrict airflow. Okay, that's that project. If you haven't come up with anything uh, on your own in the meantime, you can go ahead and download these and print these out. And uh, if you have any questions, let me know. But until then, happy printing, and I will talk with you later. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.